A'udhu Billah Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Chapter 24 verse 33 and we're going to finish this chapter tonight inshallah Go ahead please Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim And you shall pardon those who cannot find anyone to marry and they shall maintain abstinence until God enriches them from his bounty. As for those who are under your custody and are seeking education, you shall educate them if you know of something good in them and give to them from the money that God has provided for you. You shall not force your young girls to commit vice if they wish to be chaste, seeking the expanse of this world, worldly life and those of them who are forced, then indeed God, because they are compelled, is all forgiving, all merciful. And we indeed reveal to you proven signs and examples of those who perished before you, and enlightenment for the God-fearing. God is the light of the vacua and matter. The allegory of his light is like a lamp wherein there is another light, lamp. The lamp is within a concave mirror, the mirror is like a brilliant diamond planet. It is filled from the oil from a blessed olive tree. Neither eastern nor western, its oil almost radiates, although no fire ever touches it. Light upon light, God guides to his light whomever he wills, and God signs examples for the people. And God has full knowledge of all things. In the homes that God permits, he is exalted, and his name is commemorated therein, and he is glorified therein day and night. Men whom no trait or business ever dictates them from commemorating God. Oops. Men whom no trait or business ever distracts them from commemorating God, and they observe the contact prayer and give the cleansing charity. They fear the day that the hearts and the eyes are horrified. Because of this, God will recompense them for all their good deeds and bestows on them plenty from his bounty. And God provides for whomever he wills without limits. As for the unfaithful, their deeds are like a mirage on a flat plain that the thirsty thinks is water until he reaches it and finds nothing but he finds God there. He then fully repays him his reckoning, and God is quick in reckoning. Or it is like the darkness of the sea, the wave stubbornly covers him, wave after wave above him like a cloud, darkness upon darkness. When he takes out his hand, he is almost unable to see it. And the one whom God does not provide light for, then he has no light. Do you not see that indeed glorifying God is everything in the vacua and matter, as well as the birds lined up? Every one of them knows his contact prayer and his glorification, and God knows full well what you do. And to God belongs the kingship of vacua and matter, and to God is the final destiny. Do you not see that indeed God drives the clouds, then he meshes them together, then he piles them up, you then see the rain fall from its midst, and he sends down from the sky massive hailstorms, whereby he strikes whomever he wills and diverts it from whomever he wills. The brightness of its reflection is almost blinding to the eyes. God controls the night and the day. Indeed, in this is a lesson for those who possess vision. And God created every living thing from water. Thereafter, there are those who crawl on their bellies, and there are those who move on their two legs, and those who move on four. God creates what he wills. Indeed, God is all-powerful over all things. Indeed, we have revealed proven signs, and God guides to the straight path whomever he wills. And they say, we believe in God and in the messenger, and we obey. But later on, after all this, a group of them turned away. And these were never faithful. And when they were invited to God and his messenger to rule amongst them, 
a group of them readily objects to this. And when the truth comes their way, they never embrace it. Is there a disease in their hearts, or are they doubtful, or are they afraid that God and his messenger may commit injustice towards them? No, on the contrary, they are the ones who commit injustice. The only response of the faithful when they are invited to God and his messenger to rule amongst them is, we hear and we obey, and these are the successful ones. And whoever obeys God and his messenger and reveres God and fears him, then these are the victors. And they swear by God a solemn oath that had you ordered them, they would have definitely left Say, do not swear. Obedience is a rule. Indeed, God is cognizant of what you do. Say, observe God, obey God, and obey the messenger. And if you turn away, then indeed he carries his load, and you carry your loads. However, if you obey him, then you will be guided. And the messenger's mission is to clearly deliver. God has promised those of you who have attained faith and lead a righteous life, that he will make them substitutes on the land. As he made those before them substitutes, and he will establish their religion that will be pleasing to them and replaces their fear with security. They shall worship me and do not set up any partners for me. And whoever disbelieves afterwards, then these are the wicked. You shall uphold the contact prayer and give the cleansing charity and obey the messenger that you may obtain mercy. The unfaithful should never reckon that they can work miracles on the land. Their abode is hell and indeed a miserable destiny. O you faithful, those whom... You are protecting as well as those who have not reached adulthood shall ask permission from you three times during the day. These are before the dawn contact prayer, in the middle of the daylight when you are changing your clothes, and after the night contact prayer. These are three private times for you. You can commit no evil. You can... You commit no error by visiting each other during the rest of the times. God thus clarifies the signs for you, and God is all-knowing, all-wise. And once the children reach adulthood, they shall ask permission, like those before them ask permission. God thus clarifies his signs for you, and God is all-knowing, all-wise. And the old women who have no hope of getting married commit no error if they relax their dress code as long as they do not show their vanities. However, modesty is the best policy for them and God is all here, all knower. There is no blame on the blind nor on the crippled nor on the ill nor on yourselves if you eat in your own homes or the homes of your fathers or the homes of your mothers or the homes of your brothers or the homes of your sisters, or the homes of your father's brothers, or the homes of your father's sisters, or the homes of your mother's brothers, or the homes of your mother's sisters, are those which you have their keys, or those of your friends. There is no blame on you if you eat together or by yourself. Then when you enter homes, you shall offer peace to each other, a greeting from God, blessed and pure. God thus clarifies for you the signs that you may use your intelligence. Indeed, the faithful are those who believe in God and his messenger. And when they are with him in a social meeting, they do not leave unless they ask his permission. Indeed, those who ask your permission, they are the ones who believe in God and his messenger. Therefore, when they ask you for permission to attend some affairs, You may then give permission to whomever you want from amongst them and ask God's forgiveness on their behalf. Indeed, God is all forgiving, all merciful. Do not treat a request from the messenger amongst yourselves like a request that you make from each other. 
Indeed, God knows those among you who quietly sneak out. Therefore, you shall be careful dealing with those who oppose his command, for they may be struck with a disaster or they may be struck with a painful suffering. Absolutely to God belongs everything in the vacua and matter. He indeed knows what you are up to and the day they return to him. He will then inform them of everything they have done. And God has full knowledge of all things. Okay, mashallah. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, okay, are there any questions and comments or observations that from these verses that we just read tonight? Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Fazli. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome, welcome, Salam. How are you? Fine, thank you. I just had a memory of um of, of one of the conferences that we went to. You might have remembered that um some people left because we were in Arizona and it was new and there was things to see, and some people left the meeting to go look around and how um Dr. Khalifa had gotten very upset to the point where he called people out for leaving. And um, I'm just listening now as to how disrespectful that was, you know, because we did go yeah. for a purpose. And um, yeah. it, it kind of scared me because I ended up feeling sleepy and I decided, well, let me just sleep right where I am, <laughs> you know. Um, but it is disrespectful. And I'm, I'm, I'm just listening to the fact that, again, God, I really didn't remember that verse, but now we hearing it again. Um, what yeah. we did, yeah. you know, what, what was done was wrong, you know. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, very good point. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's truly uh, a test. And so a lot of people fail it, yes. Even here, when we, when, um, there's a little sign that says if you're leaving, well, I don't know how to text in that, why, but I, um, I just try to be careful of that. That's it. Very good. Very good. Yeah, mashallah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments or questions or observations? Assalamualaikum, Ms. Parvez. Alaikum salam, Parvez. Yes. Uh, just looking at verse 41, it's talking about glorifying God. Everybody is glorifying mm-hmm. God. You know, see that in the mm-hmm. glorifying God is everyone in the vacuum matter as well as the birds lined up. I mean, I was, look, I was thinking about the birds and we see many examples and you see thousands of birds flying together in harmony, not one colliding against each other. And the other day, I mean, yeah. it was around two, around two days ago, uh, I was going in the highway and I was going up the ramp. The birds had, maybe a thousand birds were already started to fly up and I had no choice but to go into them and when I went into them, because I'm on the ramp, where will I go? What amazed yes. me is that the whole flock moved and not one touched me. So I was thinking, yeah. and then I was thinking that they must be glorifying God, they must be in prayer so they know exactly how to move. I mean, I'm a moving vehicle and not one bird touched me and the whole flock just, yeah. I mean, yeah. they just go over me. So I think all oh, these birds, and I mean, it's, it's amazing. God does give this example of the birds glorifying and they contact prayer. So yeah. if we did yeah. our contact prayer properly, if we glorified God properly, most, obviously we'll have, we would have the best consequence in our life. We could, I mean, avert all disasters, collisions in our life. And, and when you look at Indeed. the... Uh, and then when you look at the verse prior to that in 39 and 40, talking about unfaithful and the deeds. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like a mirage. And then all, I mean, they think they're doing something good, but then you see God is is giving them his reckoning. And when you look at verse 40, mm-hmm. then it says that 
darkness, our darkness, God takes away the light. So that means yeah. every time our deed is bad, we're losing that light of guidance from God. We're losing the knowledge. Is that yeah. what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I yeah. mean, when I relate these three eyes, I always think that the only way to lead our life in the path of God is through glorification, constant glorification, and of course the contact prayer. Because if you go and tell people, you know, that the birds do contact prayer, they laugh at you. But I'm sure the contact prayer and this and the glorification is navigating them in the atmosphere, how they fly. It's not just like that. Yep. I don't know how how to explain it, but I mean this this incident that in the highway is making me think of all these things, and I mean just just wanted to share with yep. you all. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I want to talk about verse 55, if you don't mind. Sure. Please, please by all uh, means, yes. Verse 55. Uh, God has promised those of you who have attained faith and lead a righteous life that he will make them substitutes on the land as he made those before them substitutes and he will establish the religion that will be pleasing to them and replace their fear with security. They shall worship me and do not set up any partners for me and whoever disbelieves afterwards then these are the wicked. So when... Uh, when he's talking about his substitute, what does that mean? That means once you have attained faith and is in his law, then you become in control of your lives? It's, it's the Khalifa. Khalifa for, for the, the substitute. For the, yeah, that's for the substitute. That's what the root word is mm-hmm. here. And so that's what, that's what God is doing to those people. David was a substitute. That was a, David was a Khalifa on earth. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the person who was commemorating God all the time, and and he was the one who who had attained faith and led a righteous life, and so that's what God did to him. So that's that happens to everybody who who uh, believes in God and uh, or attains faith and leads leads a righteous life. That's that's what God's going to go, uh, you know, is elevates him to that point that, that he'll be like a, a substitute. And that's, that's what Adam was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what, that's what the root word in here is. Then you start enjoying the religion. And then once you start enjoying the religion, yeah. you're in God's path. And immediately yeah. your fear is gone and God's security yeah. comes. And everything is good. Yeah. That's why he said, you shall worship me. God is saying, yeah. don't set up yeah. any partners. Yeah. 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 I mean, this, this is like a paradigm that we need to achieve, right? If you want yes, to be able to become a substitute, substitute. Yeah. If you want to become substitute yeah. on, on the land, I mean, we came as substitutes, yeah. right, to the land. So in order to achieve to that, you, you, supposed you know, to be. But, yes. but you have to attain that faith and lead a right to life. Of course. And that's our, course. that's our mission in this of world, course. right, to become substitutes. Yes. I mean, if you're worthy of it, then you'll become a substitute. Yeah. Then you can go back. That's right. Yes. Makes sense, though. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, Paris, Paris just said something to us about about the the birds that he witnessed, and you know, but God goes a little bit deeper than that. He says, "Do you not see that indeed glorifying God is everyone in the vacuum and matter, as well as." Uh, as well as the birds lined up, every one of them knows his contact prayer and his glorification, and God knows full well what you do. So uh, uh, this this goes beyond that. This is also goes within matter and within the skies or the vacua. Uh, they all. That, that electron which is inside the matter that knows its prayers and its glorification. And if it didn't do that, you and I would not be sitting here talking about it. Okay. All of those subatomic particles, they, they know their prayers and their glorification. And God knows full well what you do. So 
God is telling us this, but it's, it's, uh, and then to God belongs the kingship of the vacuum and matter, and to God is the final destiny. So, again, the kingship of vacuum and matter belongs to God and no one else. And so, again, all of these are absolutely, with no questions asked, they go along with God's commandments. They never violate it. If they had violated those, we would not be sitting here talking about this. Okay. And that is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, any 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 other questions or comments or observations? Dr. Fogley. Yes. Uh, this, is Jerry, yeah. Dr. Fogley, this is Jerry. Yes. Just a, uh, a note yes. I had about um, something I read the other day out of Surah 51. Surah 51, the kind of just like blew me away. I was reading where it was the conjecturers were asking um, um, when will be the day of faith. And yes. um, so they were getting there, what was going to happen to them. So then the I had that really blew me away with 15 and 16 when I read it said, the righteous will indeed will indeed abide in paradises with flowing streams. Streams. The only, they only take what their Lord gives them. That is because yeah. even prior to this, they were righteous. And then it gives yeah. a couple of notes right after that where it says they rarely. So so then we can check ourselves and say it says uh, they used to sleep only a little during the night. And before dawn, they ask for forgiveness, and a portion of their money yes. is set aside rightfully for the beggars and the deprived. And so it within matter, and the last thing it says that, as well as within yourselves, do you not, do you not then see? So I just just, yes. just really stuck me to the core. So just want to put that note out there for you, just for everybody to enjoy. Thank you for your time. Salam alaikum. Yes, thank you, thank you. Salam alaikum. Very good. Anything else? This chapter of Prophet is called the light and and as we see here it's in verse 35 of this chapter okay god is the light of the vacuum and matter the allegory of his light is like a lamp wherein there is another lamp the lamp is within a concave mirror the mirror is like a brilliant diamond planet it is fueled from the oil from a blessed olive tree neither eastern nor nor western is all oil almost radiates although no fire ever touches it light upon light god guides to his light whomever he wills and god cites example for the people and god has full knowledge of all things so this is this is a allegorical description of god's light and um and um, the entire um, that God says, Allahu uh, nuru samawati wal ard, that God is the light of vacuum and matter. And as I said this before, and I'm repeating it here again, that that the light here is is a lot more than just visible light. Okay, and this goes through all of the. A spectrum of light and other things that we cannot see, and uh, and uh, it's is very interesting. Okay, so uh, if I show you something here, 
um, a window um, Okay, this is an astronomy picture of the day, different image of photography of our fascinating thing. So this, this, as you see here, it says neutrinos in the sun. And this is, this is the picture of the sun, but this picture is not visible light. These are neutrinos that come from the sun. And every second, on every square centimeters of your, of your body, it's, it's about 15% of an inch square inch is 15 percent of square inch is one square centimeters centimeter and and on every square centimeters of your body in every second during day and night 365 days a year there are 100 billion um neutrinos from the sun that hits your body every square centimeter Okay. And so they come from the sun. So this uh, detector actually detected those neutrinos. And so, and these neutrinos go through the earth. So you can see the sun 24 hours a day, basically. If you had neutrino vision, you could see the sun 24 hours a day. You don't have to wait for sunrise. It's always there in the sky because you have neutrino vision, because they go through the earth. They do not stop they're not like light that stops when the earth actually uh, is not facing the sun. Okay, so we have day and night. We have darkness and light. But in this one, you always have light. These are neutrino lights. And they come and, and you see them. And so this is the neutrino picture. Um, in explanation, the explanation is down here. You can, you can read it. Um, but anyway, so um, when you see this, this was done June 5th, 1998. Uh, but my point is that um, uh, when God says light, and remember now on Day of Judgment, they say that, you know, God resurrects them blind. Okay? So the righteous can see this, and the unrighteous cannot see this. They can only see the, the visible spectrum or whatever, which is which is total blindness. It's not it's not useful anymore. Okay. Um, so the idea about this whole thing is that the light that God is talking about is goes well beyond these descriptions that we are thinking of light. Okay. This is a vision that God gives to the righteous on the day of judgment. That's not, it's not, it's for, bit for the other ones because they just don't have the developed soul that, that, the, that the righteous have to be able to, to basically witness all of the glory of that day. Okay? And that's the scary part that we have to pay attention to. Okay, so, so this is what God is saying about allegory of his light is like a lamp, okay? And wherein there is another lamp. So it's, it's something which is self-radiating. Uh, it is something that um, looks like a brilliant diamond planet. It, it, it uh, shimmers, okay? It is fueled from the oil from a blessed olive tree neither eastern nor western. So it's not something that, that rises and sets. It's, it's something which is always there. Okay? And so that's God's light. And then God says that uh, he, God guides to his light whomever he wills. Okay? 
and God cites example for the people, and God has full knowledge of all things. So now the verse after that, the verse after that, he says, in the homes that God permits, he is exalted and his name is commemorated therein and he is glorified therein day and night. Okay. So you have you have you have homes that that really do not have the permission to do this because they have been so wicked that that they are really not worthy of commemorating God. So men whom no trade or business ever distracts them from commemorating God, and they observe the contact prayer and give the cleansing charity, they fear the day that the hearts and the eyes are horrified. Okay, so I just described that day to some extent to you that, you know, when, when God says they're they're being resurrected blind and say, well, I was seer before. What happened to me? How is I'm resurrected blind? Well, they can't see those things because, because of the a shrunken soul that they have, they have actually acquired during this stay on this planet, during this earthly life, if you will. So that's these are the these are the warnings that God has given us in these verses, and He tells us that look, this is this is this is um, good news as well as a warner. That's what it is. This book gives us good news as well as warnings, and so we have to pay attention to that. Dr. Padre. Dr. Father? Yes. Yes, you, yes. So I'm like, Dr. Father, I just want to say that surah I had, that you read in 30, 24, 35, I mean, it's always been allegorical description, and we have to calm ourselves down to understand. we got to let it go and understand it's allegorical. Yes. But your explanation, yes. and that, if that ayat doesn't set your hair on fire, it's so com- it's, it must seem like the most... That ayat seems like it's yeah. got to be like the most incredible ayat. I mean, one of the most incredible ayats in the Quran. This ayat right here, and then with thirty-six following up, it's just absolutely incredible. It's mind-boggling. Just blow. It just sets my hair. On, it just sets my hair. Yeah. On. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments or questions, observations? Assalamualaikum, Dr. Fawzi. Waalaikum salam, yes. I, um, I just want, there's a, this phrase that people say there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> and just picking up on the light and then the fact that today the, um, the information we got, there was something new. There's always something new with God that we don't know. And so um, I just thought back to that. I appreciate the miracles that we got today and we thank God to be alive, to have heard that also, you know, and um, in that yeah. part of his yeah. life. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that just gives gravity to all of these things. I mean, to these, to these ayahs that we read, uh, you know, during the week and every time that we read or on, it gives gravity to these and how serious God is when he's talking about these things. And as I said, uh, we should really fear that day of judgment because God is telling us about it and this is this is not a joke. It's not a you know, it's not something that God wants to just frighten people. It's something which is going to happen. And depending on how our uh, 
lives were spent in this worldly life, did we did we believe in God alone? Okay, did we did we lead a righteous life? Did we did we do the salat and did we give our cleansing charity? Did we do these things? And so that's what we have to think about. And if we haven't done these things or not doing it, then then those people, that group of people, are in trouble. And this is something that God is warning people that that uh, that the nature, as we just read it here, um, they are in absolute obedience to God's commandments, and they follow it without deviation, without the slightest deviation. And so we really have to be in harmony with nature. Then that's really the way that you can actually succeed. Okay, because if we do not go along with God's commandments, which is the natural way of doing things, then, then the act of this life, this worldly life, has become totally unnatural. As I said, you know, we use things that God has granted us for, for a specific purpose. We use it for a different purpose. We abuse it. We misuse it. And if we do that and practice doing that, then and the soul, and, which, is, which is the real person, that's going to be shrinking and shrinking, and and on the day of judgment, this is what's going to happen. It says that for the unfaithful, their deeds are like a mirage on a flat plain, and the thirsty, the thirsty thinks is water until he reaches it and finds nothing. But he finds God there. He then fully repays him his reckoning, and God is quick in reckoning. Okay, so this is this is the this is the destiny of the on the unfaithful, or it is like darkness of the sea, the wave stubbornly covers him, wave after wave above him, like a cloud, darkness upon darkness. When he takes out his hand, he's almost unable to see it. And the one whom God does not provide light for then he has no light. Okay. So, so that light that's provided for us is coming from God. And here God has given us this information in 2445. He says, And God created every living thing from water. Water is the base, the basis for all living things. Okay, it's the prerequisite for all of the all of the living things is water. So which means what? Which means that any place that has water, there must be living things there. We don't know about it. And that's our problem. Okay. Thereafter, there are those who crawl on their bellies, and there are those who move on the two legs, bipeds, and those who move on, on four, quadrupeds. God creates what he wills. Indeed, God is all powerful over all things. Okay. And then in chapter 16, God says, and he creates what you do not know. And so God is, God creates. His act of creation is done because what he does is actually, he, he reflects his greatness through creation. Okay. That's, that's what the al mutakabiri is. al mutakabiri means that he actually what he does is that he, he completes his greatness through creation, through his handiwork. 
So the more the more that we see from his creation, the more at awe we are becoming. And the more we actually grasp his greatness, how great God is and what he does. And okay, indeed, we have revealed proven signs. We saw it today. Proven signs. So the signs that we see from God every, every week that how these things are actually meshing together to produce the Quran. And now we, we, we are seeing basically the, the effects of these mathematics on literal structure of the Quran. There are verses in there and there are things in there that actually it, it narrates in mathematics what they're supposed to be said in those verses. Okay? So when we read this, for example, indeed we have revealed proven signs, and God guides to straight path, whomever he wills. There are these numbers here. Okay? There is 2035, 1337, 5753, all of these things are in there. So they, they have meanings. And there is a reason why this, this verse is actually was positioned right here. You and I may not know it right now. Okay. But this is God reveals to us little by little. Okay. And so he, this is how he teaches the Quran. That we didn't know about these things, all of a sudden they come in and, and makes makes a lot of sense that that did not make sense before. And we were in a hurry and again rushed things and when we rushed things we made a mess out of it. Because we were not developed enough, we were not mature enough. Okay. We were not fully reach that stage that that could understand the gravity of these verses. And so we basically threw it behind us and say it doesn't make any sense. Okay, but it does make sense. It wasn't the time for us to know that. And so we have to be careful. We have to be we have to be uh, we have to be uh, listening to God's advice that he tells us that uh, don't rush it. Okay. And, and so God's command has a time and a place. And when that time and place is there, then that's the time that we can understand. So again, here at 47, he says, and, and they said, these are the disbelievers, we believe in God and in the messenger, and we obey. But later on, after all this, a group of them turned away. And these were never faithful. These are the guys who were wishy-washy. They really didn't want to be around. They didn't want to listen. They weren't in a rush to understand everything. You know, it's uh, the, uh, um, the skeptic. Okay, the skeptic was uh, uh, the guy who wanted the entire knowledge of the universe demanded from the sage that um, to give him the knowledge of the universe standing on one leg. And so uh, that doesn't work that way in the case of the scripture. You have to be patient. And when the, when the time comes, God will reveal it to us. And that's the exact time that you're supposed to know about it. No other time. And the truth, when the truth comes their way, they never embrace it. Okay, so, it says, is there a disease in their hearts? Or are they doubtful? 
Or are they afraid that God and his messenger may commit injustice towards them? No. On the contrary, they are the ones who commit injustice. The only response of the faithful when they are invited to God and his messenger to rule amongst them is we hear and we obey. And these are the successful ones. They have no problems. And whoever obeys God and his messenger and reveres God and fears him, then these are the these are the victors. And they swore by God a solemn oath that had you ordered them, they would have definitely left. Say, do not swear. Obedience is, is a rule. Indeed, God is cognizant of what you do. So don't, don't start to exaggerate and things like that. Okay. Say, obey God and obey the messenger. If you turn away, then indeed he carries his load and you carry your loads. However, if you obey him, then you will be guided. And the messenger's mission is to clearly deliver. That's the only, the only mission that he has, nothing else. Okay. God has promised those who have attained faith and lead a righteous life that he will make them substitutes on the land as he made those before them substitutes, Adam and, and, uh, and David, as God describes in the Quran. And he will establish the religion that will be pleasing to them and replaces their fear with security. They shall worship me and do not set up any partners for me. And whoever disbelieves afterwards, then these are the wicked. And you shall uphold the contact prayer and give the cleansing charity and obey the messenger that you may attain mercy. The unfaithful should never reckon that they can work miracle on the land. Their abode is hell and indeed a miserable destiny. And so these are the warnings that God has given us. Okay. Any, any other comments or questions, observations, before we quit for tonight? Okay, very well. If there are no more, then we'll 